Okay, a um, little disclaimer before I start the video. I've noticed from reading some of my comments that my sort of American viewers sometimes find it a bit hard to keep up with like my speech pattern, if you like, because of the accent barrier and perhaps I'll deliver things a bit faster than what you're used to. So what I've done um, is there's a link in the description to sort of the script that I'm going to be reading from. But I'm also going to be making a concerted effort to speak in a more clearer, accessible way for you guys. So hopefully that works and we're on the same sort of level and, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm rushing through things. And yeah, hopefully it's the best of both worlds and it works. So let me know if you found it better. Because um, to be honest, it's been a bit of a struggle writing it like this. I wouldn't usually do this video in this way, but I want it to sort of be accessible to everyone. So let me know if this is working. If not, I'll just go back to the way I usually do it and we'll, you know, pretend it never happened. So let's right. go. Today is the day I wrap up my final thoughts on Arco Linux after a week's use. If you remember, on episode 6 of the Distro Spinner, I was tasked to use Arco Linux. If you haven't watched that episode yet, I'll chuck a link to the top right so you can go and watch that now. But in that episode, we went ahead and downloaded their Deep In Edition. I will however briefly go over some of the other versions available as I made a little bit of use of them throughout the week. Starting with the installation process. On the Arco Linux website they have posted some very detailed instructions on how to get started, if you've never done this before. Once you boot into the USB you are greeted with a live XFCE desktop environment, with some links to Gparted and the installer, which uses Calamares. I particularly like how they've included a section which allows you to go through a long list of commonly used programs and packages, and simply check a box on whether you would like to include them in your installation. There's a good selection here which even includes some of the popular themes and icons, including my personal favourite which is Arc. Now I think this is a great addition to any installer as it allows the user a bit more control over which programs are installed out of the box. The only negative here is how long it took. It was by no means the slowest distribution to install that I've used, but it certainly took a bit longer than what I expected and what I'm used to. However, once the installation process is finished, the waiting is over. This is one of the faster implementations of Deepin that I've used. It comes with Deepin version 15.11 which is still the most current version available, while we are still awaiting the delayed release of version 20. Being based on Arch means you have a rolling release distro, which will keep you up to date with the latest packages as they become available. You also have access to the Arch user repository, or AUR for short. The AUR is a community driven repo which contains over 63,000 additional packages that it will compile from source without too much extra effort from the user. It's pretty sweet. Let's keep going. Upon starting your computer you will be greeted with the welcome screen, which has some useful links to get you started, one of them being Choose Your Project. Clicking this will open up a link to their web page that brings you to phase 1. As you can see we've skipped most of these phases, as we opted for their deep in desktop ISO. But I think this is a brilliant way to get new users up and running. It also goes to show how much work has been put into this project. Their implementation of Deepin is very well configured. It comes with the usual host of Deepin specific programs, like Deepin Music or Video. Now, I'm personally not the biggest fan of this suite of programs, and that includes Deepin's own Files Manager. So I found myself uninstalling a lot of these and opting to install alternative programs that work better across different desktop environments than Windows managers, which I'll get into shortly. You'll find most of the settings for Deepin are housed within the control center, which opens up on the right and can also be opened with a keyboard shortcut Control Alt and M. This works well for the most part. However, it feels a little bit cramped when viewing and editing the keyboard shortcuts. Talking of shortcuts, Deep in the desktop environment has some brilliant touchpad gestures that work without any additional setup required. Now I forgot just how much I enjoy using Deepin as a desktop environment, and Arco Linux have done a brilliant job with their implementation. Combining it with Arch as the base, you get a very modern and refined user interface and experience. Moving on to the performance side of things. On my machine and hardware setup, which is getting pretty old now by today's standards, the performance has been outstanding. 
Starting my computer up is super fast, and I've only experienced one noteworthy crash during my week, which was a product of having one too many virtual machines open, a few Google Chrome tabs going, and also trying to play a competitive game of Counter-Strike. Needless to say, we lost that game. Sorry team. Before I went crazy installing multiple desktop environments and Windows managers, plus a slew of random packages, my RAM consumption was sitting around the 700 to 800 megabyte range. After that craziness ensued, I noticed I was only using around 40 megabytes more, which is pretty good going. One of the programs included out of the box is the Arco Linux Tweak tool, which is an amazing little program allowing you to easily install other desktop environments, all with a couple of clicks. It also lets you configure Grub, Pac-Man, LightDM, NeoFitch, etc. all from within one application. The choice of desktop environments and Windows managers are brilliant. I managed to try out quite a few, but there were loads left for me to try out. The ones I did get to use besides Deepim were Mate, which is a traditional Linux desktop environment, and they're using version 1.24. Then we have GNOME, which is fully updated to the very latest version of 3.36.1. I also managed to get it working with dash to dot from the repository, which at the time of writing wasn't updated yet to work with the latest version of GNOME from the GNOME extensions website. Then we have Awesome. Unlike Mate and GNOME, Awesome is a Windows manager, which is blazing fast and you can configure it to your heart's content. Then we have i3, another Windows manager, which I have a bit more experience with and is probably my favorite tiling Windows manager. And Arco Linux have provided quite a clean setup here. Openbox, another Windows manager. Again, highly configurable, but this one is a stacking Windows manager. I also used Herb's LTFWM, I might have said that wrong, which is a customizable tiling Windows manager but I'd need to spend a bit more time with it to really get to grips so with it. So updating your distro is as simple as opening up PatMac and navigating to the updates tab, typing in your password and letting it do its thing. Alternatively, and um, what would be my preference, you could just pop open up a terminal and type in the update command, which is sudo patmac dash capital S Y U. So my only small complaints about this distribution are all pretty service level. I'm not a huge fan of the icons that were installed by default. For me, they were just far too circular and I found the colors clashed with the overall desktop environment and feel, but that's just me. My other complaint, which I've already mentioned in the beginning, is just how long it took to install. And this was made more apparent when I did a side-by-side -side installation run of this and Ubuntu. The difference in length and time was night and day, with Ubuntu coming out on top by a significant margin. So my final thoughts. I've really enjoyed my time with Arco Linux and I would happily recommend this to anyone looking for an Arch-based distribution that takes care of a lot of the setup for you, but still granting the user a bit more freedom in the installation period to choose additional programs and packages they would like to use from the onset. I particularly like their deep inversion. But with the inclusion of the Arco Linux Tweak tool, it kind of caters for everyone. If you feel more at home on a fully fledged desktop environment, but would still like the option to easily try out one of these Windows managers like i3 or Awesome, it's a pain free process that only requires a couple of clicks from the user. The default configuration is the same and everything works as you would expect. They have also gone through the steps of keeping their website up to date with clear instructions and guidelines on how to get everything up and running. This has been one of the more fun weeks I've spent in this series, and as I've said before, actually enjoying the distro you were using and not just seeing it merely as a launch pad to play a game or get some work done, it's actually fun to use. And that's an important aspect of any distribution, otherwise I'll still be using Windows. Overall, this is up there with some of the best that I've had in this series, and this is one that I would definitely be keeping a close eye on in the future. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.